this artwork has been really, really important to communicate uh, an appreciation for this diversity of life, how amazing these plants and animals are, the amazing relationships they have with each other, and to appreciate and encourage people to preserve that diversity of life. Hi, I'm Don Luce. I'm curator of exhibits at the Bell Museum. And one of the things I do uh, at the Bell Museum is I curate the museum's collection of natural history art. It is a little bit unusual, maybe, for a natural history museum to have an art collection. But in fact, art has been a really big part of natural history from, for hundreds of years. Uh, part of the mission of a museum is to document, discover and document the diversity of life. Obviously, having an image of those species is uh, like the old saying, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. Scientists have been discovering species for hundreds of years, describing them, trying to communicate that information to other people. And one of the key ways that they have found, most efficient ways to communicate that information about this diversity of life is through illustrations and artwork. Really from the um, 1600s to the present day, there have been uh, publications about um, uh, the diversity of life, birds, plants, animals, that have utilized illustrations as a way to communicate this diversity. And, these, uh, and that has expanded not only just to tell people what uh, exists out there, but also tell them something about how these plants and animals interact with each other, how they interact with their environment. Bell Museum here, uh, from its very origins, had re recognized, okay, it's important to, to have this illustration document this biodiversity, but it's really important to use these images to communicate that information and to inspire people to care about the natural world. And so the museum has always had this seeing that interface between art and science is really part of its mission. So that's expressed in the dioramas that we have. It's been expressed in some, a lot of the publications that have been done. For, for example, the Birds of Minnesota that was published by one of the founding directors of the Bell Museum, uh, Thomas Sadler Robert, Roberts. And in the 1920s and, and 30s, he was uh, insisted on having the best artists in the country illustrate that book. And so there are just a number of these examples where the museum has built up this uh, uh, reputation uh, for integrating art and science and a collection of artwork to go along with that.